Hello everyone, it's Jen. As promised, in this video, I will be disclosing my political biases and leanings. I am doing this because, number one, I want to be honest with you and all the people viewing my videos. By sharing my biases, you will know where I'm coming from and why I view things in a certain way. Lahat naman kasi tayo may mga biases. Usually, yung mga biases natin base yan sa kultura, sa pagpapalaki sa atin, sa kinamulatan nating mga buhay, um, sa educational background natin, sa mga experiences natin at marami pang ibang factors. Like I said, it is not my goal to proselytize my opinions to anyone. I'm using this platform um, as a way to simply share my ideas and if you think that they are valid or credible, according to your own discernment, then I'd be happy to have that common ground with you. If you do not agree with them, then we can agree to disagree and be civil and even be friends. In fact, I believe na marami tayong matututunan sa mga tao na iba yung paniniwala sa atin. Huwag tayong tumulad sa iba na nagtatayo ng walls or nagkukulong sa sarili nilang mga echo chamber dahil intolerant sila sa um, paniniwala ng iba. Cancel culture is a dangerous totalitarian trend. None of us is perfect and it doesn't hurt to learn from each other. Second, I want to be clear with my agenda before presenting my arguments rather than um, pretending that I am totally objective and that I don't have an agenda at all. Our biases inform our opinions and the way we frame our arguments. Para sa akin, mas magiging um, productive yung mga political discussions natin kapag umpisa pa lang, clear na tayo which side we're on and then start the debate from there. Rather than claiming na tayo lang yung anak ng Diyos, gaya ng marami dun sa kabilang parlor. Immediately acknowledging our biases also saves us the hassle of debating who is morally superior your I am not a moral absolutist I acknowledge that we come from different perspectives and interests most of them clashing but in order for us to harmoniously coexist we need to debate and flesh out ideas until we reach a certain consensus and come up with the rules that will govern us this is the very point of politics hence it isn't helpful or productive um, to debate who is right or wrong or who is decente or not gaya nung marami dun sa kabila it is better to debate policies we believe would benefit society more. And I am of the persuasion that collective good trumps individual whims. I am revealing my biases now so when you listen to my statements or arguments, um, you can make an appropriate judgment as to how to view and process what you're getting from me. Now that that's done, I'm going to start. My name is Jan. I grew up in a small, tightly knit community in Pampanga and come from a middle class upbringing. Hindi kami mayaman, hindi kami mahirap. Kumbaga, sakto lang. Contrary to what other people may think, um, these uh, rural communities where I come from are actually well organized. Um, everyone has their specific role to play but these roles are not necessarily defined by the individuals themselves but by the community. Kunwari, sa bayan namin, alam namin kung sino ang pupuntahan namin kapag merong napilay or kung sino yung pupuntahan kapag gusto namin bumili ng sariwang gulay, kung sino masarap magluto at pwedeng i-hire kapag may fiesta or kung sino yung expert sa ganito sa ganyan. At usually, yung expertise at roles nila na mana pa nila sa mga magulang nila o sa mga ninuno nila at balak din nilang ipamana sa mga magiging anak nila. So, very self-maintaining yung system. But just like everything else, this kind of system has its positives and negatives. Anyway, being part of such a tight community is perhaps the reason why I tend to be collectivist or someone who prioritizes collective good over individual freedom and a communitarian or someone who believes that a person's identity is largely shaped by the community they were born into. Ang ibig pong sabihin ng communitarianism, um, skeptical ako sa paniniwala na we have innate true selves or yung tinatawag nilang real me or totoong ako. 
para sa akin, yung personality natin or yung pagkataon natin ay hinuhubog ng lipunan na ginagalawan natin um, kasama pa ng ibang factors gaya ng mga experiences natin. This is also why I tend to disagree with essentialism or essentialist arguments in general. Essentialism is the belief that ang meaning ng buhay natin nariyan na pagkapanganak pa lang natin. I am more of an existentialist meaning naniniwala ako na uh, tayo yung magbibigay ng meaning sa mga buhay natin. My elementary and high school background also reinforced these collectivist values in me. I studied in two Catholic schools where rules and order take precedence over uh, individual freedom. Dahil authoritative yung schools namin, we were forced to suppress our individualism. At the same time, I believe that Catholic values tend to resemble socialist values. And since we are a predominantly Catholic nation, um, I have a hypothesis that Catholicism is part of the system that fuels socialism in the Philippines. Kung you observe kasi natin, um, many predominantly Catholic countries have strong socialist values. In fact, kung i-analyze natin yung Catholic song na pananagutan, you will notice that it endorses socialist virtues of community, charity, harmony, and self-discipline. This song could well be a socialist anthem. But then again, this is just a mere postulation and not a logically proven claim. I know that a lot of people would react negatively to this assertion given that we tend to associate um, socialism with communism. However, let it be clear that those two are vastly different. I'll see if I can discuss these differences in a separate video. Socialism isn't outrightly bad. In fact, many of our current government policies such as tougher law enforcement, um, universal health care, free college tuition, um, massive infrastructure building, etc. These are socialist in nature. These policies benefit the collective rather than just a selected few. Para sa akin, what is destructive is when we take our values to extreme degrees. Yan yung tinatawag nating extremism. They take their values to the extremes. Um, they believe that yung paniniwala lang nila ang tama. Kaya they tend to be intolerant of other people's views. Their ideological and slavery forces them to commit violence or resort to violence um, against those people that they do not agree with. Going back, this kind of upbringing, you know, um, authoritative and considerate of others, shape my personality. Uh, kaya lumaki akong introverted, obedient, and respectful sa authority. Very conscious din ako sa hierarchy. Because of the way I was brought up and due to my Catholic education, I find it difficult to be uh, chummy-chummy with professors or people na mas mataas yung rank sa akin. Um, kasi... I am very conscious of our place in the hierarchy and our boundaries are clear to me. This is why I am very respectful of other people's boundaries. Pero I expect these people, mataas man yung rank nila or hindi, to respect my boundaries as well. Because I studied in private school, marami din akong mga naging kaklase who came from an upper class background. Their upbringing was totally different. They grew up pretty much being left to their own devices. They were not forced to take up responsibilities, didn't have to struggle for what they have, and they are not used to not getting what they want. These people develop more individualistic values or values that favor individual freedom over collective interest. Because they were sheltered and um, are not forced to coexist with other people who hold different values, um, they find it difficult to navigate situations where a compromise has to be made. So on one hand, we have these people who grew up under collectivist values. And on the other hand, we have those privileged few who belong to the upper class, the liberal elites, with individualistic values. In my opinion, sobrang pronounced ng divide na ito ngayon sa society natin. At... Um, it plays a huge role in the dynamics of our current politics.
So my early years were quite structured and I had a very strong sense of meaning and identity. Um, very clear yung role ko sa family, sa community, sa school, and I was judged according to how good I fulfill the roles that um, my community assigned to me. And then college happened. Just like many young Filipinos, I moved from the province to Manila um, for my college education. Noong time din na yon, nag-abroad yung parents ko. All of a sudden, all structures that I have in my life and roles that I used to play, um, they disintegrated. I was thrown out of my comfort zone and my horizon was open to a whole new world of ideas. So, for the first time in my life, I have freedom, I have autonomy, and I have time to explore explore my individuality. Despite this, I retained the values I was raised with, but I also started developing some individualistic values. I studied college in FEU Manila, a private non-sectarian university with a mix of liberal and um, non-liberal policies. I would say na very diverse yung student rin ng university in terms of social, religious, and economic background and in terms of political leanings. In fact, during my time in FEU, um, I was recruited and joined a leftist group. Pero hindi nagtagal yung membership ko doon. I also taught political science and international relations at the Polsai department for two years. And I would say that the dominant ideology ng faculty ay liberal. After college, I took up my uh, master's degree in international studies at UP Diliman. Both universities promote academic freedom, but I would say na mas diverse yung political leanings ng professors sa UP. In fact, contrary to popular belief, I would say na very heterogeneous yung ideology sa UP, hindi lang puro makakaliwa. However, I would agree na pinakamaingay yung leftist and liberals sa UP. Maybe to some extent, this smothers other groups from speaking out. Uh, it is also possible that other ideologies were reduced to the fringes because the mainstream media has a preference for liberal and leftist opinion. Anyway, it is in UP where I really learned to become more critical as my mind was open to myriad of worldviews. Not only did I start criticizing the meta-narratives that are forced upon me by society, I also started criticizing my own belief system. Subsequently, I realized that my penchant for individualism during those years, um, despite starting as healthy and formative, was corrupted into becoming an attempt to be validated by the liberal elites, become one of them, and be cool. As they say, the elites or the bourgeoisie would always dictate what is trendy or even moral. But I realized that this should not be the case. Our obsession with always wanting to keep up with the elites robs us of our own agency as free men and women. It also doesn't necessarily serve the interests of the collective or of regular Filipinos. Um, in fact, it only further serves the interest of the elites because we advance it for them. So my heightened self-awareness and self-criticism during that time resulted in my ongoing commitment to refuse or resist any grand ideology that seeks to govern my life. Mapa liberal pa yan, mapa communism pa yan, socialism pa yan, capitalism, any grand ideology or meta narrative. Free thought is very important to me and uh, subscribing to an ideology or any label for that matter curtails that freedom. Every ideology puts blinders on us and prevents us from seeing things outside our own biases. But despite me saying this, I'm still perfectly aware that uh, I still have biases. But what I do is that if I have an opinion or an idea, I now have that kind of a built-in logical self-regulatory mechanism that allows me to criticize or review my own opinions before sharing them out loud. I am also willing to change my mind if proven wrong or if facts and arguments warrant 
or if the counter evidence is sound. To cap off this video, I will just state a few of my current attitude towards, towards certain issues. In terms of society, I think there is a need to prioritize the more practical material needs of common Filipinos over the more esoteric, high-level needs of the liberal elites. I believe that freedom and human dignity mean nothing if the basic needs of human beings aren't even met. In terms of our economy, I believe that our economy must not be guided by a political ideology, rather by the ultimate goal of improving the quality of life of all Filipinos. This can be achieved through uh, the synergy of various schools of thought. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, the point is, public interest must be priority when we talk about the economy. As they say, it doesn't matter if the cat is black or white as long as it catches the mice. Number three, uh, for Filipino society to achieve significant progress on the political, social, and economic front, I believe that a decentralized federal parliamentary form of government coupled with the free economy is the way to go. And lastly, in terms of our foreign policy, it is high time that we become neutral and diversify our foreign relations. Switzerland can do it, Singapore can do it, Finland can do it, and neutrality made these countries very prosperous. So why can't we? So that's it guys. Thanks for lending me a bit of your time. Again, if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you get notified each time I upload a new video. Also, please do not forget to like my Facebook page and my Twitter account. You can find the links in the description. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you again soon. Bye!